Hey guys, today we're going to do another species spotlight. Uh, we're going to talk about green iguanas today. Uh, it's a bit of a controversial subject, at least in the media as of late, but we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about the species in and of itself and whether or not it makes like the best pet in general. Uh, today we are here with Queenie, who she's a little grumpy right now because Queenie has been self-cycling, which means that she has been producing follicles and growing eggs on her own, even though she isn't in with another male. And she's actually done this two years in a row. And she just laid a huge clutch of eggs, some of which they seem like they're viable. And I don't know if they can reproduce parthenogenically, which means that a single female can reproduce and create essentially clones of herself. So every single baby will look kind of like her. I don't know if they can. I can't really find any research. Everything's kind of out of date. So we put them in the incubator and we're, see, and we're gonna see how she's gonna do. But she's a little grumpy because she's a little deflated and she's kind of tired and she's just kind of getting back up at the food and not to wait and everything else like that. But I digress. So as you probably can tell, um, Queenie is not green, but she's still a green iguana. And so what that means, so we're gonna turn around and hopefully you guys can see her a little bit better. You can probably see that she looks a little deflated. She had, I think it was like 25 eggs and all but one uh, were fully formed. So that's a lot of eggs inside of her little body. Uh, but anyway, uh, so the green iguanas, they're called green iguanas, that's the actual species, but they come in a pretty large amount of different color varieties. So there's a green, um, there's this red, which is what she is. She's a red green iguana. Let's see, where, where are you? I don't even know where you are. That's yeah, okay. Uh, and there's like this blue azanthic color. They even come in a couple forms of hypo and albino too. So, but we got her cause she's a red and she's an adorable little butt. Um, so as you can see that she has this little tail, you can see that her tail looks really different right here. That's because when she was little, she actually dropped part of her tail. And that's an adaptation that a lot of lizards have where if a predator comes along and grabs a hold of them, they'll drop off a segment of their tail and hopefully the predator will take that and then that way they can run away. But when that happens, they'll regrow their tail, they'll regenerate their tails, but it doesn't always come back looking the same. And hers regrew pretty long. It's almost the full length of what it once was, but it looks just a little bit different as you can tell. So iguanas have been in the pet trade and here in the United States for a long time, like since back in the eighties when Tom Crutchfield down in Florida brought them into the country. And after, I don't know if it's necessarily when this happened, but after Jurassic Park came out, they got hugely popular because it's you get to have a little dinosaur in your house. And while that's really cool and it's great that, you know, this animal gets a lot of attention, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for the animal. Because what happens is when something gets really popular, everybody wants it, but not everybody can give these animals proper homes and care. And what I mean by that is, as you can see, Queenie, hi Queenie. Um, Queenie here is a pretty big lizard. Like, I don't know if you can really see how long she is. Like, she's a big, big girl and she isn't even fully grown. She's four years old and she has some growing to do. She just exploded size-wise and we're not really sure why. We weren't feeding her any heavily. We're not giving her steroids or anything like that. She just got really big really quickly. So, because they are so big, we're just going to turn around. I'm probably just going to talk to you guys with my back. Hopefully the microphone picks these guys up. But so these guys get so big, they need very large enclosures, which means a lot of the time people aren't actually able to even have the area in their houses to provide them that. So, you know, you'll see like a little one, little ones are, you know, this big when they're babies, but they get pretty long. They get over two and a half feet long in their first year sometimes in Queenie. And so, you know, they, and they're very arboreal. As adults, they're almost purely arboreal, which means they really only come down to get water. And even then, sometimes they'll get water from foliage and stuff to eat other types of food and to mate and move to different territories. But for the most part, they spend a lot of their time in the trees. So because of that, they have these huge, huge long claws. And it's actually the reason why I'm wearing this long sleeve shirt today, because even if she's okay coming out and not trying to bite or tail whip me, they still have very sharp claws and that can do a little bit of damage unintentionally by all means. She's not trying to hurt me, but it's they, they can do, they can, they can, they can scratch you up pretty well just with those claws because they use those for climbing. But so because they're arboreal, because they're really large, you need this huge, 
huge enclosure. So here at the house, we have a huge bird aviary, which is six feet long, seven feet tall, and four feet wide, just to house these iguanas because they need a whole lot of room, both tall and wide. Plus they need a lot of humidity because they're a tropical species. Originally they're from South America, but since being introduced into the United States, you know, for how, however it happened, uh, an, an endemic a population has actually established itself in South Florida, and they've adapted very well to that as well, because Florida, uh, at least in Southern Florida, like near the Everglades and down getting towards uh, like the Florida Keys and stuff, it's a very good ha habitat for them. But in captivity, they need a whole lot of room to climb as well as to get on the ground because like females specifically, they like to dig. So like her, we added a bunch of substrate when we saw that she was kind of puffing up. We were thinking that she was going to kind of self-cycle again. And we put all that in there. The humidity raised up really high. And then she immediately dug a burrow and laid all of her eggs. Um, but I digress. Uh, so you need this very, very large, large area. And that's just kind of hard for a lot of people to actually accommodate for them. And as well, you know, we're, we're, I'm just going to kind of probably keep coming back to this. These are really, really big lizards. Like, they can be really good pets, but they are really big. And so a lot of the time, people, you know, when they see this little baby little iguana, they don't realize it's going to be, like, this girl isn't even fully grown yet. Like, she kind of exploded in size. For whatever reason, we're not really sure why. We were not feeding her heavily or anything else like that. But she just got really big. She's, a, she's about four years old. And they can still get a little bit bigger. Males get even longer. They can get almost six feet long from head to tail. Uh, big, big males. So, you know, you know, we have to deal with this kind of really, really big lizard. So, and because they're really big, that means they eat a lot and they poop a lot. So your food bill is probably going to be a little bit higher other than just giving them crickets every once in a while. At least on the bright side, iguanas are almost strictly herbivores. You can give them a little bit of protein here and there, like hard-boiled egg is good. Um, little bits of protein here and there like fish or small bits of chicken are okay. I've seen people get pinkies. I'm not a biggest fan of that. Um, but their, they, their, their diet needs to be almost exclusively vegetables. So dark leafy greens, um, hearty vegetables, a little bit of fruits okay. Um, they also have prepared diets, uh, like pre-made food that you can purchase yourself that you can mix into. Uh, here we like to feed almost exclusively uh, fresh vegetables. Uh, and maybe that's why she's growing really well, because they get a lot of collard greens, mustard greens, squash, cucumbers, not a whole lot of carrot um, fruit. And then once again, with any reptile, they need to have that uh, vitamin and calcium supplemented too. So we give them as that as well. But that being said, you know, once you accommodate for how large of an enclosure you need, how big this litter is going to be, Everybody wants this, you know, really, really tame iguana that everybody sees, like the guy walking around with him on their shoulders at, like, state fairs and stuff, which, once again, isn't necessarily best for the actual care of the animal. But, you know, to socialize and to habituate with these animals, it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience. Like, this little girl, she definitely has her days, and it's mostly when she feels comfortable coming out, and especially being on camera like this, because it's really bright, and I'm talking really loudly, and it's a little unsettling for her. It's kind of how she feels comfortable. And to socialize and do all that stuff with these really large lizards, iguanas, or tegus, or any other monitor species, it takes a lot of time and a lot of consistency and a lot of patience to do with this iguana, which a lot of people don't have. And unfortunately, that's the reason why you see a lot of iguanas in not so great shape giving up to like pet stores and reptile rescues and stuff like that. But I'm going to start getting a little soapboxy about that, so we're going to step away. We're mostly just talking about the iguana itself and the care of it. Okay. So... You know, we talked, so as far as the care goes, we talked a little bit about, like, the enclosure. So, I don't know if there's necessarily a good minimum requirements of sizes or anything like that, but I would say they need at least a good two to three feet high and a good two to three feet wide with a very large water bowl because they like to get in there, they like to soak, they like to swim, um, a lot of substrate for them to dig in, plus it needs to have very high humidity. Uh, plus a good area for basking, you know, they need something in the high 90s for a good basking spot and enough room for them to kind of move around however they feel comfortable to properly thermoregulate or to adjust their body temperatures, as well as they need the UVB bulbs. Now, um, iguanas are really, really cool, but, you know, once again, they do get very large. And I know I keep coming back to that, and there's a reason why, and that's because, you know, with male iguanas, and you always can tell a male iguana from a female, it's very easy to tell. Number one, they're a lot larger. 
Number two, their dewlaps are are very large, although hers is really big for a girl. She's a very uh, a very brawny girl, um, as well as their cheeks are a lot more pronounced. But male iguanas, you know, we talked about how with with this girl, she self cycles on her own. So she just you know decided the the conditions were correct. How we're keeping her to go? Oh, heat's great, humidity's great, light's great, food's great. I can make babies. Nature is telling me that this is a good opportunity for me to make babies. So she did it on her own. With males, they do the same thing. Only with males, they're looking for a mate. And so what can happen with sexually mature male iguanas is they can get, essentially, I don't like to use the word aggressive, but in all honesty, in this case, it kind of is, they can get very aggressive when it comes to finding a mate. And so in captivity, if you have a large male iguana, you need to be a little bit careful. And I know a lot of people who actually keep, you know, a rope toy or a stuffed iguana for them to just kind of get out their pent up frustration, however that is, uh, out on that so that, cause that way they avoid unnecessary conflicts with people during that time. And it's not for that long of a period of time. It's just something that, you know, people have to deal with in, in general. But overall, um, iguanas, they can make really, really good pets, but they really aren't the best pet necessarily for a lot of people. Um, you know, a kid, you know, a 15, 16 year old kid probably isn't going to be the best ideal, you know, pet parents, I guess you could call it for an iguana because they do take a lot of time. They do take a lot of responsibility. And I know that, you know, they're this $20 lizard that's a really easy to get and they're really popular, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good idea for you to have them as a pet necessarily. It takes a little bit more time, a little bit more research in general. Um, Mostly, it's, in all honesty, a lot of it is the time and the amount of space that you give them. Like this little girl, you know, basically she just puts up with me. Um, I don't know if we can necessarily call her tame, even if what she get, would come down. And, and these guys can be pretty smart. They can come to their names. They can be potty trained. All that really fun stuff. It just takes a lot of time. We're mostly just having her be okay with us coming in and out of the aviary and coming up for food and not getting really grumpy um, as long as we're taking care of her properly. And that's mostly what we're working with with her. Um, we just, you know, she's never going to be necessarily like an ambassador animal and meeting all the other kids. We have a, we have a couple other larger lizards for that job. But we just want her to be happy and we want her to be healthy because a lot of iguanas they don't, they don't, they they don't end up in great places. So that's why you know you when you're looking for a new pet, that's what you need to do. You need to do the research and make sure that you know you can commit to giving this animal a good home for its life, which can be over 10, 15 years. Um, sorry if that's not necessarily the happiest note to end on, but you know, it's kind of the case is that, you know, these guys make great pets, but you know, you just need to give it a little bit more consideration when it comes time to deciding what pet lizard that you want, because lizards do make great pets. Um, I digress. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, I hope you got some good information from it or you found it informative. I don't know if it's necessarily super entertaining, but maybe she's up here being kind of silly as yep, she's moving around. Um, please like and subscribe if you can, uh, hit that bell notification, uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you want to see anything specifically or anything else down in the comments, uh, you know, share with your buddies, not even necessarily on Facebook or on Instagram or on YouTube, just, you know, tell people that if it's, it's really cool, you know, share your passion, share your interest, and that's great because that's what we want to do is perpetuate knowledge because the more you know something, the better you can understand it. If anybody knows anything more about kind of iguana reproduction, like this girl self-cycling and more, really more in general, like if they're capable of parthenogenic birth, if anybody has any knowledge or um, knows anybody or information about that, please let me know down in the comments. Um, you can, we now have a Facebook, we have the Instagram, you can check us out on there. Uh, we probably post a little bit more regular information on Instagram than anywhere else. But you can get a hold of us there. You can always talk to us down in the comments again. Uh, hope you guys had a great day and we will catch you next time.